Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achono and welcome to another episode of a lot of their tips. Today we're gonna to be talking about programming languages. So which programming languages should you choose essentially for doing London Dare? So let's talk about this. So first of all, we have procedural programming languages, right? Now the most uh, popular example here is C. Um, and a procedural programming language, of course, is a basically a non-object oriented programming languages, language, right? So like in, in a procedural language, you just write your code, you just write your functions and um, you don't have anything like classes or instances or objects. Um, so there are a few problems with procedural programming languages as far as something like Latin Dead goes, right? First of all, they are fast and efficient, right? That's obviously not a downside, but they are fast and efficient. That's kind of an upside here. However, uh, C in particular is very slow to develop in without libraries, right? So in other words, if you want to make a window, it's not easy, right? You have to basically, I wouldn't even consider doing pure C for anything outside of Lottom there, not to mention inside Lottom there. It's just really, really slow. It is basically the definition of writing things from scratch, okay? Ignoring stuff like assembly and freaking binary, whatever. Um, and for masses of codes, for example, so obviously if you're making a game, you're going to be coding a lot. That's going to give you a bad time. And the reason is it's really, really hard to organize your code in C, okay? You don't have things like classes. So if you, you don't have like concepts like inheritance, polymorphism, you know, all of that stuff, you don't have any of that. You don't have, you can't really make like an entity, a superclass of, we can't do that stuff, right? You have to work around that kind of thing, okay? Um, that is a bit of a problem because it, it makes it really hard to organize your code. And again, if you are trying to make a game in 48 hours, you don't want to really be thinking about, hang on a minute, did I, did I do this function already? Is this accessing? A, is this accessing another function? My file is really big now. There's like a thousand lines of code in one file. I should split this up. Blah blah blah, etc. All right. It's just hard, really hard to organize. Now, um, the alternative is object-oriented programming languages. Now, this uh, includes languages like C++, Java, C Sharp, whatever. Right. Um, now, this is much more practical for video game development. Okay. And the reason is the way the video games are typically structured nowadays is uh, you have um, a lot of inheritance happening. You have these objects, you have these uh, these these instances happening, okay? And that makes it much more suitable for making games, not just in Ludum Dare, but pretty much everywhere around the world, right? Everywhere in, not around the world, well, yeah, around the world, but every, in pretty much any any, like, well, in life. I mean, it makes it just much more practical for game development. Um, because the way that games are structured, objects are just convenient, very convenient for game development, okay? Um, it is around the same speed as procedural. So if you're wondering about performance issues, you shouldn't be really because, um, I mean, it is, it is, it, there, there is some difference on some systems. I actually did a massive research report, um, about this. Essentially, there's no difference, okay? It's about the same. Um, now most of these languages also happen to have suitable libraries, okay? And by that I mean attached libraries as well as access to libraries, okay? So for, for example, right, C++ has libraries for, has, sorry, has classes and, and, um, and objects for strings and for dynamic arrays. C doesn't have any of that stuff, okay? Java has an excellent graphical API, which we'll get onto in a minute. Um, C++ or C doesn't have that stuff. So you have a lot more content, a lot more support for these kind of languages, which is much better. Now, let's talk about C++, okay? Why should you or shouldn't you use C++ in Ludum Dare? Um, first of all, it's a native language, okay? What does that mean? That means that when you run something on your computer, it's going to natively run that, okay? On wh whether that be Windows, Mac, whatever. It is native, okay? You write code, you compile the code. Once you compile the code, you run your application. That application communicates directly to the CPU, okay? Directly. Um, that's very good for performance, mind you. Now, they're all, they're, for C++, there are a solid uh, number of libraries available, including STL, GLFW, SF, SFML, Allegro. I've actually never used SF, SFML or Allegro, but I've heard good things about them. SDL is brilliant, so is GLFW. Um, there are a lot of engines available. Earlicht and Ogre engines are one of the most popular ones. Um, but because of these libraries that are available, you could always make your own engine in a suitable amount of time. I'm talking like maybe like four hours, okay? You could definitely, like I'm talking like sound, uh, everything. Maybe even a bit of 3D done in about four hours because of these awesome libraries like STL and GLFW, okay? 
um, which is which is great. Okay, so the development time isn't too slow. Now, unfortunately, there's no web browser compatibility natively. I know there are very very slim little really kind of slow not really awesome ways of getting C++ to run in a web browser I am aware of that right but natively there is no web browser compatibility now that's a problem that's a bit of a problem to me and the reason that's a bit of a problem to me is when people are looking at your games in Ludum Dare right they want it they probably like downloading a game isn't gonna be well it's gonna take too much effort okay and you, you guys might be like well hang on a minute downloading a game that's you know, two clicks away, like that's easy. But no, really, it's not. Because when I'm voting for games in Ludum Dare, like I do like every time I do it, um, I'm going through like, I'm trying to go through as many games as possible, right? I want to I rate as many games, I want to play as many games as I can in a short amount of time. When I So what I typically tend to do is basically skip the games that require me to download it, okay? I want to just be able to click, be taken to a web page, have it load in two seconds and play the damn game. That's what I want to be able to do. Now... If it's written in C++, I have to download it. I might be missing DLLs. There's all this other stuff happening, okay? And that's a bit of a problem to me, okay? So, in in order for... If if your goal in Light of Dare, again, is to finish a game and have people play it, then I recommend that you choose a language that supports web browser compatibility, okay? That will run inside a web browser so that people can go to a website and play the game right on that page. C++, unfortunately does not support that. Now, there's also not no hot no hot swapping of code. What that means is, um, and again, yes, I realize there are ways around that. For example, you could you could write your important values into a file and then simply modify the file, hit control S, hit something in the game to reload the file and then load those values in. That's very complicated and that will take time to develop. That's a bit of an engine feature that you'll probably have to develop yourself as well. Um, it's very hard. You can't update on the fly, right? In Java, for example, and in C Sharp, you can write, you can write a bit of code you can uh, you can run the application, and then let's just say you're trying to position a rectangle. You can update the coordinates of the rectangle, hit Control S, and it will automatically update in the game. Okay. Now because C++ is native and must be compiled, that's not possible. You actually have to recompile and rerun that application. That's going to take time. Okay. And when you have 30 hours of development time, that might be a problem. Now there are slower compile times. This isn't a huge. This is not a huge issue. Okay. I put this in here, but it's not a massive issue. Right. Um, I mean, it, it it certainly is a lot slower to compile C++ uh, in larger scenarios. But if you are using libraries and game engines, especially if you're if you're not writing your own engine, but you're using readily available engines, compile times might slow you down. Okay. I've, I've seen compile times be up to like 30, 20 to thirty seconds. Okay, and that's a problem because you know if you're trying to position a, if you're trying to position your HUD in the right, in your heads up display in, in, in the right position on the screen, you have to recompile it all the time because there's no hot swapping. That's a problem, okay, for 30 hours. Um, so to optimize, right? To get C++ to actually run fast, you need to spend a lot of time doing memory management and other garbage collecting things yourself. Um, C++ is, a very, is probably the fastest language, uh, actually C is probably a bit faster once you optimize it, but C++ is one of the fastest languages available. It's a native language, it's a wonderful language, but to get it to run at its peak, you need to pour hours into it, okay? And that's a problem in Ludum Dare. Finally, it's slow to develop, right? Because of all these features, no hot swapping, slower compile time, slower to optimize, uh, it's just going to take you longer to make a game, unfortunately. And also, there's no real good inbuilt library, okay? There's, you'll have to download something like SDL if you want to get a window and graphics on the screen and with relative ease. And that's a bit of a problem again for Ludum Dare because we're trying to be as fast as we can here, honestly. Um, but yeah, I mean, essentially the, the deal here is C++ is going to take you, it's going to take you a while to pump out a game in C++, honestly. Um, I mean, C++ doesn't even have features for loading images or audio, for example. And most of these like SDL... SDL, see, even SDL needs external libraries like the, like the JPEG and PNG, um, you know, uh, decryption, decompression, whatever libraries as well, which is a bit of a bit of a pain to try and set up and so like that. So essentially, C++, as wonderful as it is, and I really do love C++, it's not, it's, it's going to be slow to develop a game in C++. Now, Java, let's move on to Java. So, Java runs inside a virtual machine, okay? So instead of, and I'm not going to talk about this in depth here, but instead of you compiling your code and then running the application and the application communicates directly to the CPU, 
Java doesn't work that way. Java, you compile your application, you uh, you run your application, the application communicates to the virtual machine, which then communicates to the CPU. Okay, so there's there's like a little uh, there's a little like pit stop on the way, and because of that pit stop, pit stops take time. Okay, it's gonna slow your game down a bit. Now, now, this is really important that you realize this. Without the optimization in C++, Java is faster than C++. Okay, if you don't handle your memory with advanced little algorithms, whatever, if you don't run C++, if you don't pour hours into that and optimize it to, to the max, Java will be faster, okay? And because we don't have this time, right? Um, because we don't have all this time to optimize it, in the end, I'm gonna say that performance, the, the performance uh, advantage of C++ is actually gonna be irrelevant, right? Now, um, the other point that I just brought up there about Java was that uh, it has an excellent included library with a great graphics API. Okay, it has one of the best, I, in my opinion, in my opinion, the best library that comes with any programming language out there. Okay, you have an awesome graphics API. The graphics class in Java and that whole Canvas JFrame system is just, it's superb. Okay, it is wonderful for doing graphics. Um, and the graphics API as well is just, well, that's what I just talked about. But yeah, it's just brilliant, okay? Um, and that makes making games from scratch using that API just really fast, really fast, okay? It's awesome, okay? Now, if that's not your thing, if you don't want to make it from scratch, there are solid libraries available like LWJGL, okay? That's more than just an OpenGL binding. JOGL will be an OpenGL binding. That's I think that's all that is, Java OGL, Java OpenGL. Um, but LWJGL, lightweight Java game library, um, was actually what, what was used to make Minecraft. And that features a lot of things such as uh, input handling, um, obviously the window and OpenGL contacts as well as OpenGL. Um, and then you've got other awesome things like input, like input as in uh, like joystick and um, controller handling. And you've got all these little things that are, that are just awesome. Image loading, everything. Um, LWJGL is awesome, okay? Um, now, Again, if that's not your thing, there are solid game engines available. JMonkey Engine, JOga, Ardor 3D. I forgot that little bracket at the end of that, damn it. <laughs> uh, solid game engines, you've, you've got a lot of them, okay? you got not as much, I'd say, as C++, but because you have LWJGL available, and that's awesome, and because the graphics API is amazing, um, it's, you know, you might not want to write your own game engine. I mean, as in you might want to write your own game engine. You might not want to use someone else's. Now, the big plus of Java, again, is native web browser compatibility, okay? Applets, you can run your game inside a web browser natively, okay? And by natively, I mean out of the box. You write it once, you really don't need to change much. You need to make it execute as an applet, which is about 20, like five lines of code probably. Um, and you'll be able to get your game to run in a web browser, which means more people will play it. Simple as that, okay? Now, hot swapping, okay? These are Java's really all, Java is all pros as far as it comes to let them dare. Seriously, guys. Um, hot swapping, you can edit stuff on the fly. You wanna move that rectangle? Sure, just punch in a new value, hit control S, don't even have to close the game and recompile it. It will happen immediately, okay? Awesome, fast to compile. In fact, it's pretty much live to compile. Fast to optimize, okay? What I mean by that is that the optimization in Java, because it's a fairly high level language, um, uh, when you're optimizing it, you really don't have to do much, okay? By optimizing, you'd probably be spending more, times on, more time on how you want to loop through arrays, what you want to do in for loops rather than memory management because Java handles memory for you. Again, a blessing and a curse. In Ladam Dare, it's a blessing. It's a very big blessing. And because of all these features, it is extremely fast to develop a game in, in Java versus C++. Now, C Sharp. I have not used a lot of C Sharp, okay? So I can't really comment much on this. Now, it's pretty much the same as Java, okay? So it's a virtual machine, etc. Uh, similar graphics API, okay? It's got a similar graphics API. I haven't personally used it, but I'm aware that it is uh, very similar to Java's one. Now, it, it, it's, okay, there's no web browser compatibility natively. I'm, I'm very well aware you can run C Sharp in a browser, not natively. That's not as much of a problem as it, as it is with C++, but it is still more of a problem than it is with Java. Um, there, are, there are less libraries available. Personally, the OpenGL binding for C Sharp, I'm not a big fan of that. I have used that, by the way. I'm not a huge fan of it. I just don't think it's as strong as it is for C++. Well, obviously, it's going to be strong for C++ because it was written for C. But um, uh, it's not as strong as it is for Java. And uh, But you do have Unity, okay? And you can develop with JavaScript or Unity's own language or C Sharp and Unity, okay? So you do have that option available to you if you know C Sharp. 
And um, I might have to say you you might want to take advantage of that because uh, we'll talk about libraries in the next in the next little tip episode thing. But um, it is very important to uh, you know to use those little tools. Action scripts, so Flash, right? Adobe Flash. Um, so fast development time. Uh, obviously, Flash runs inside a web browser. You can run it on desktop. You can run it inside a web browser. And I have to say, it's probably one of the best, excluding HTML5. It's probably the best thing you can run in a web browser nowadays. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's really, really, really good. Um, Java's applets aren't the best, nowhere near the best. Java's applets suck, I'm probably gonna say, but they do work, they do do the job, they are annoying. Uh, Action Script Flash is awesome in a web browser, that's what it's pretty much made for. Graphics, awesome for graphics, right? You can use Adobe Flash. If you have Adobe Flash Pro- Professional, whatever, CS6, CS5, whatever, you have the Adobe Creative Suite, Adobe Flash is an awesome application. You can make some really sick graphics right in there. And then, you know, basically it's more, it's almost like using a game engine, I'm gonna be honest. It's almost like using something like like U- U- Unity or something like that, but mainly for 2D games. And you know, you, if when you draw something, you can really smooth it, you can add all those effects onto it. It's just really, really cool if you wanna make a nice, sleek, looking game, okay? Live debugging as well as a feature of that. You can debug your code while it's running. Okay, so that brings me to my last point here. Choose what you know, okay? Faster development is usually better, okay? This is Lord and Dare. You have 30 hours. I should probably stop saying 30 hours because I think people might be pulling the all-nighters and having like, I don't know, their girlfriends deliver them freaking meals on wheels here or something during the day. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, actually. I should get. I should get on that. But um, uh, faster development is usually better. Okay, so you have a limited amount of time, two days, to make a game. You want to be able to not spend time on doing th- things that are just, I guess, burdens on the language. Okay. Um, if if your goal for Ludum Dare is to complete a game. Choose something you're familiar with. If you don't know any C++, but you've wanted to learn it for the past two years, Ludum Dare is probably, it's an awesome place to learn C++, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you. But if you are if you wanna complete a game and you want to submit it, I'm gonna go ahead and say, don't do that, okay? If you just wanna basically spend two days trying to make a game and you don't really care about submitting it, then, um, you know, then go ahead, do something new, which is actually the next point, right? Learn something new, but, um, if you do want to complete a game, please make sure you do something that you already understand because otherwise it's going to frustrate the hell out of you. It's really hard to do something new in Latin there because apart from the pressure of having to finish something in two days, you know, you also have the pressure to learn something in two days. So just be wary of that, all right? So that's that's pretty much going to wrap up this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you like these kind of format, format of videos where I've just got like presentation, PowerPoint presentation slides in front of me and I'm just talking, uh, let me know because then they're, they're not they're not too difficult to make and uh, and they're it's a lot of fun as well. But um, apart from that, guys, please hit the like button if you did enjoy this video. There'll be another tip for Lotum Dare tomorrow. We're going to talk about libraries and uh, and also happy nineteenth birthday, me. Goodbye.